Whether our skies are clear or cloudy could be decided by tiny particles from dying stars in galaxies far, far away. Researchers here at the Danish National Space Center in Copenhagen have found a clear link between cosmic particles deep out in space, the cycles of the sun, and changes in our planet's weather. A real breakthrough in climate research. The sun puts out the solar wind, which is a continuous stream of plasma from the sun. This carries the sun's magnetic field out into what is known as the heliosphere, a big area of outer space that surrounds the sun. And this magnetic field in the heliosphere shields us from cosmic rays, particles, very high energy particles that originate in supernovas. Now these high energy particles has an influence on ionization in the lower atmosphere and these in turn have an influence on the creation of clouds. We can see that process inside this tank. High energetic particles that have passed through the sun's magnetic field then shoot down to earth and as they hit the atmosphere they help create the building blocks for clouds. What we have here is uh, what we call a cloud chamber and the purpose of this is really to be able to see uh, particles that come from space. Um, we are talking about particles that are produced by stars, and it's actually dying stars. And they might have died uh, several million years ago. And when they go through, they make sort of a, a, a condensation streak, just like from a, a contrail from an airplane. The sun's uh, magnetic field screams out at least half of these particles. But sometimes the sun is very active, so it's a better shield, more effective, and sometimes it relaxes and you have many more particles coming in. We believe that these particles are fundamental also in forming clouds. There is a remarkable correlation between the solar activity and changes in the Earth's climate. Henrik's team is exploring the link between the Earth's climate and what is known as space weather. Space weather is really a chain of processes originating at the sun and propagating through through interplanetary space, interaction with the Earth's magnetic field, and then finally the effect down to the atmosphere. The Earth's magnetic field acts as a buffer against solar storms. Gusts of solar wind can dump particles into the atmosphere, creating the auroras around the poles. The magnetic field is really the controlling factor of of the space environment. It's very important. Electric currents are generated. It's electromagnetic interaction, so strong electric currents are generated in our atmosphere and in the space environment. And they create magnetic fields, which we can see with the satellites. Space weather can cause problems for modern technology. The European Space Agency has two missions aimed at understanding the sun's effects on the Earth. SOHO detects explosions on the surface and storms heading our way. The cluster mission comprises four spacecraft that work near the Earth, measuring how solar activity affects the space around our planet. They focus on the changes in the magnetosphere as it's buffeted by energy particles. We still don't fully understand the sun, but we know it follows cycles. If you look at it just in the normal visual light that we look at the sun, it doesn't appear to change. You can see sunspots on the, on, the, on the sun, very small dark spots that fluctuate in intensity over 11 year cycles. But if you look at it in other, in other scales, in, in ultraviolet or extreme ultraviolet, it actually fluctuates a lot. During a solar storm, flashes of X-rays and ultraviolet rays take just eight minutes to reach Earth. A few hours later, solar protons and other energetic particles arrive, followed a couple of days later by the solar wind that can pound the magnetosphere. If you're a spacecraft, you are in space and you are embedded in this radiation environment. And if the radiation gets intense, 
the spacecrafts can be destroyed or disrupted. It's a hazardous environment for spacecraft and satellites. We need to learn to predict space weather if we're going to explore the solar system. There was a, a huge solar eruption in 1972, <clears throat> in August. Now in April and in December, there was uh, two Apollo missions with astronauts walking on the surface of the moon. The moon does not have a protective magnetic field. The moon does not have a protective atmosphere. So this radiation just goes down to the surface. And had there been astronauts at the surface walking around at the surface of the moon at that time, they would really have been very, very sick and maybe even killed. Space weather is not only a threat to man-made objects in orbit. In the longer term, it could also affect our climate. As the sun changes, so does the number of cloud-promoting particles reaching our atmosphere. If we look at, at history, uh, we can see that there has been large changes in these uh, particles arriving at Earth. Uh, and when that happened, climate changed, and there have been large changes. Really, large. I mean, we had the Little Ice Age, as you probably know, from around uh, 1300 until 1850, a very cold period. There was a period where many more particles were coming into the atmosphere, and uh, it made more clouds. Clouds actually cool the Earth's atmosphere and give you a colder climate. Until recently, it was thought that space weather and Earth weather were entirely separate. Jens Olaf Pepska Pedersen wants to prove the wider extent to which solar cycles affect our climate. We are the Space Research Institute and, and much of what we do at the Space Institute is look out towards space and look at the stars and planets and, and what's going on in the solar system. And, and I think it's very interesting that apparently there's also something, there's a link between what goes on in space and, and what happens on Earth. Uh, so it's not isolated spheres uh, uh, and, and also the climate system of the Earth is not an, an isolated system. It, it does interact with, with the outer space and I think that that's a very uh, intriguing uh, idea and, and, and worthwhile to investigate.